We're here at the 2011 National Train Show with Matt Kwadinski from Fox Valley Models. Matt, of course, is chief cook bottle washer for Fox Valley. Head janitor. And head janitor. <laughs> uh, Matt, of course, is a real um, hardcore modeler and, and really knows what modelers like and it really shows in the details of your products, Matt. Thank and you, you continue to bring new tooling. Tell us about some of the things you've got from the passenger car line as well as freight cars. Sure thing. Well, uh, expand on our original 1935 Hiawatha. Did a couple new cars utilizing some of the existing tooling. Um, Milwaukee Road in 1935 built a whole slew of new passenger cars, including express mail cars for baggage mail express service, as well as uh, some bunk coaches. And the main difference are, um, when they were built in 1935, Milwaukee Road actually took two of these out of the lot and built the original cafes for the Hiawatha. Um, mail express cars ran on just about all the name trains and used on quite a few other roads, including Great Northern, Northern Pacific. Now there's three paint schemes? There are starting with three paint schemes, and in later years, the Hiawatha actually added a baggage car, so we did one with the uh, light gray roof to add on to the existing consist that guys want to add. Next car up would be the bunk coaches. Looks very similar to the regular coach, except the window arrangement's a little bit different. It was actually segmented into three compartments, and kind of a unique feature is the last one had eight fold-down bunks for a sleeping space for crew and passengers. These were primarily built for use on overnight trains, including the Olympian, Pioneer, and a few others. There again, a couple different paint schemes. Uh, we'll hit them all. There were originally only eight bunk cars built for the Milwaukee Road. They wore just about all the paint schemes, and when Milwaukee is done with them, they went to the Pacific Great Eastern. We'll hit that too down the road. So the next thing, uh, something you've announced before, but showing some first-time samples that look really fantastic, and that's the very unique b and Wagon Top Boxcar. Tell us a little bit about both the HO and the N versions that you're coming out with. Sure thing. I'm very happy with how these came out. They're highly detailed, first time available in, in ready to run plastic uh, before you could only do these as resin kits. Uh, two distinct versions on the B&O wagon top. As built in 1937, uh, originally built with a, just a straight flat door. I started shopping them sometime in the 40s and when they did, they changed out to a Youngstown door. And just a few minor differences is the door tracks got a little bit longer, different door obviously, sometimes the placard change spaces. So we did two unique body styles to cover both phases of that. Uh, starting with four different paint schemes on the cars, and paint schemes are very specific on the B&O, depending on the lettering style and color, you can pinpoint modeling years. So there's about 12 or 13 legitimate schemes for them. We will hit them all over future releases. And being the wagon top, of course, what makes it really unique is the roof, right? Very unique. Uh, if you look at old photographs of, of trains and yards, you can notice quite a different variance in the roof lines, and the B&O cars just stand out just because of the unique curvature of the roof. And it's probably worth pointing out too, Matt, that even though if this car was a unique B&O car, it could have been seen anywhere across North America. They went everywhere. Guys have photos of them in California and Washington. It's If someone in the east had a load to ship to the west, they used an available box car, and a lot of times it was one of these. Now stepping up to something a little bit more modern, of course, is the Sioux Line 7 post boxcar. Absolutely. Sioux Line uh, built these cars starting about 1967, kind of a kit built car in their Fond du Lac shops. Uh, kind of unique and there's seven posts on each side, so it's commonly referred to as a seven post boxcar. Um, specifically a Sioux Line car in later life, some of them got sold off to other roads, but Sioux Line there again had quite a number of paint schemes on them and we're going to start with uh, six, including some they sold to the CSX. Well, Matt, you know, you continue to bring great product. We really appreciate you taking a few minutes here with us at the National Train Show. Thank you so much for your time. Happy to do it. Thank you.